I'm Stella and I chose the Saint, Saint Catherine of Alexandria. Um, I chose her because she, I don't know, stayed loyal until her death and like it was cool how she performed many miracles even after she died and like I feel like she liked doing like artsy things and I kind of do too and like she like liked reading and yeah, so I like reading too. St. Elizabeth as my saint because she had a strong religious connection and she didn't lose faith in God. Um, my name is Scout Carpenter and I chose St. Gertrude of Nivelles because um, I liked her story and she's like the saint of cats and I really like cats. So. Hi, I'm Nico Del Rosario and I chose St. Dominic as my saint because his name is the same as my name. Change always happens. You can't control it. It's a part of life. But you can control how you adapt and respond to it. Imagine picking up everything and moving to a new place, while putting your trust and faith into someone who you know will guide the way. This happened to me last summer when my family moved to St. Louis for my dad's job. Before that point, everything had been at peace in my world, but little did I know it would be turned upside down. During the move, whirlwind of emotions flooded me and questions ran free in my head. I always asked myself, would I make friends? What would school be like? Would anyone like me? And where would we live? And as these questions came in my head, fear, anxiety, and sadness ran free in me as well. However, I quickly remembered that even in times of trouble, God is by my side and with a plan for me. And although it is hard to let go of all the crazy emotions in my head, it was e easier to embrace this curveball in life instead of resisting it, knowing that God was with me. Knowing this, this move has been a great thing for me because the experience has pushed me to become closer to Him. And as I got closer to God, I was more at peace with myself. And with Him by my side, He gives me the courage to try new things. For example, I was nervous about making friends and adjusting to my new school, so as anyone does, I joined the volleyball team to get to know people. And I know you're thinking, how does trusting God tie into playing volleyball? Well, if you're like me, a person who's never played volleyball before, you need all the help you can get. But seriously, a person, even through a small thing like volleyball or meeting people on your first day, you have to trust Him to guide you along the way. Additionally, my confirmation classes helped me connect to him on a deeper level, not just praying to him, but experiencing him in the little things, like if someone came and talked to me for the first time, or even getting a good job grace after a game. He helped me in a cut time struggle, and I hope someday I can help him too. So there, I want to close this off by a line in Proverbs that describes, I guess, my relationship with him. My relationship with him. Proverbs um, 3, lines 5 through 6. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, and always acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So, they speak to me because, I guess, with God, you have to be all in with Him or not at all. Thank you. Okay. There are many negatives in the world right now, including world hunger, climate change, coronavirus, and political tension. It feels like nothing can get better. It's easy to feel like you're alone and you can't fix things, but through faith, there is hope. There is always a positive side that is revealed once you look through a lens of faith. For example, last summer I had to move from Georgia to St. Louis. At, one, at first, I was feeling despair, darkness, and sadness. But once I truly stepped back and looked at the situation and the opportunities to, become, to come, I gained hope, light, and joy. Faith has helped me make the best of things and has helped me approach bad situations with optimism. Looking through a lens of faith has also helped me be non-judgmental. It's important not to focus on the negative traits of people, and I often stop and try to understand their situations and impart love and compassion. Relating to the words of St. Francis, you have the chance to make a light in someone's life and make a difference. For me, I see God most when serving others. I get to brighten someone's day and help them out through times of struggle. Through confirmation, I hope to strengthen my faith in God and to continue to confront challenging times with positivity.
confirmation saint is St. Francis of Assisi. I chose him because I love animals and I want to have a career in veterinary medicine. Hi, my name is Ellie Hubbard and I chose St. Catherine of Siena as my patron saint because, first of all, she's a twin and I'm a twin too, so I was able to connect with that. And then also, she was supposed to have an arranged marriage with her sis dead sister's husband, but she was like, no, I'm not doing that. So I just thought that was really good. And then also, she was, she is the patron saint of nursing, and I would like to become a nurse one day. And then also, she became, like, she got the hobby of doing, like, giving back to others, and I just think that's really cool of her to do. Hi, my name is Catherine Lukey and I chose St. Raphael the Archangel as my confirmation saint because he is the patron of arts and sciences, both of which I'm very passionate about, and also because he's the patron of like the Archangel of Healing, which is just, I hope to be able to use his power to help people in need. Ava, for a confirmation, I chose St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton because I admire her charity work and the impact she had on others. Whenever my mom was sick and battling cancer, one message she always made sure I heard was to think of the good, not the bad. So in other words, thinking about the good things in, is joy. For example, when I am down from my challenges in life with school or sports, I take a second to think of the joy. I'm Chase Morrow, and this is my faith statement. To me, faith is like an onion, full of layers. The onion's outer layer, layer is made up of people who say they believe in God, but don't really live the life or practice the faith that's in words only. Then the next several layers are people who believe in God, but their faith comes and goes over time. They may stop going to church for a while, then go back later. They turn to God when they need it, but lesser when times are good, making the relationship with God kind of one-sided. Digging a few more layers down, you find people that are moved by their faith, enough so that they try to make it a part of every thought and action. Their lives are guided by their faith. And then there's the Onion Corps, made up of folks who've dedicated their lives to their faith, serving others on the behalf of God, like priests and nuns. For me, up till this year, I'd say I wasn't even a part of the Onion yet. I was really just aware of God because of what my parents had said or done and told me to do. I was just following along blindly, but this year was different. This year my parents told me it was time to choose. That felt alarming, you could say I woke up. Over the year, I began to see faith in a new light. Prayer, something I had once seen as for people like priests and nuns, suddenly seemed a lot more accessible. This newfound understanding gave me the confidence I needed to start adding God to my life more often. I also realized faith isn't as strict as I thought it was. It isn't just for the folks at the core who practice their faith strictly. In my own life, I've seen folks take a break from church, others who decide to go on their own path, and another who say they just don't know. Like the onion, I believe God loves them all, no matter what layer they are. It helps me to think that God is always ready to accept you, always forgiving and always loving. Now I have a choice to stay or to go, and I choose to stay because I believe it's the right path for me. Hi, I'm Brady Noonan. Faith in God is not something that you were born with or that it can always come naturally. It is something you have to practice like a sport. By practicing, I mean you have to keep praying, going to mass, and thinking about God in order to get closer to him. Some people have to learn that he exists. To learn that he exists, you have to keep practicing to try and see him in your day. By getting confirmed, I'm staying open to seeing him in my life, even if I'm not all the way there yet. Hello, my name is Lily Ryder, 
And this is my faith statement. As I have grown older, I have been filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But wonder and awe, which used to come so easily to me, is now the hardest for me to grasp. Through all my ups and downs, I've had my younger cousins. My favorite thing to do is hang out with them and be with them. I babysit each of them all the time and love to watch every aspect of their personality. I realize now that my wonder and awe is watching them. Each one of them is filled with this joy for all things in the world. When I'm with them, a little bit of that awe from when I was younger comes back to me and I'm able to see it again. The special thing to me now is having awe of seeing the awe instead of seeing it. Throughout all this, I realize I've been blessed beyond comparison with so much. As I have now received more gifts of the Holy Spirit, my challenge is to continue the awe. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicholas Shepard and this is um, a part of my faith statement. Maximilian Colby is a great example of someone who believes in their faith and honors it. I see him as a role model, someone to look up to. Faith to me is thinking about those whose faith helps them to be able to be the best person they can be. Maximilian Colby does just that. He gave up his life to help Holocaust survivors and without his faith, he would never have reached that point. By looking up to a person with strong faith, I am able to grow my own. My, my faith strengthens me to be the best I can be, the best version of myself. That's why I'm proud to be Catholic and why I'm excited to continue my faith journey. It can be hard sometimes, especially in today's world, to keep up with a strong faith. But through my life, I have found that by, that by doing so, faith can help me with any other challenge I face. I want to continue my faith journey in order to be the best person I can be. Hi, I'm Molly. I chose St. Elizabeth as my saint because she had a strong religious connection and she didn't lose faith in God. a specific plan for each of us. Instead of worrying about every bad thing, look for the good. 